Hey, everybody. It's one more pole bearer. This is episode number 17 of season three of The Twilight Zone. Last time, there was nothing in the dark. Or was there? <laughs> I'm not going to say anything more about that episode, but um, yeah, you'll see. You'll see. Uh, this one, this one, I don't know what to expect. Expecting a pole bearer of some sort. Uh, not expecting a very lively and happy episode, but Twilight Zone could swerve me, you know? Could do that weep. You think it's going to be one thing and then it's another? I guess we'll find out. What is this? Ooh, an elevator. Ooh. This is, this is spooky. She's all set, Mr. Raiden. I don't know where you got your sound effects, but you'd swear a bomb was exploding. That's precisely the way it's supposed to sound. Ooh, fat screen, screen TV. Oh, shit. Good effect, dude. That about do it, Mr. Raiden? That about does it. You've got quite a setup here. Is yeah. part of the illusion, too? No, this room is not an illusion. It's the best designed bomb shelter on the face of the Earth. Ooh, a shelter. No. The hydrogen bomb is not an illusion. But tonight it's for gags, huh? A practical joke, let's say. Oh, you can say that again. Sound effects going and that stuff on the screen. It's where the whole world was getting blasted. She's going to trick people into thinking the world? You did all this to all three of your friends? Being destroyed? Oh, this is all sorts of... Whoop. Are you one of his friends? Beneath the basement of a New York City skyscraper. Mr. Raiden is rich, eccentric, and single-minded. Crazy? Because all of you have just entered the Twilight Zone. What? Even this guy? Even me? Not me. So what? He's gonna trick people into thinking while they're down here visiting him? The rest of the world has been destroyed? Then what? Good gag, dude. Good evening, friends. Friends? Just step across the hall to the door straight ahead of you. Very thick. Please come in if you will. Uh, I wouldn't step now, inside there. Make yourself come. Claustrophobic. Ooh, everything checks out. Yeah, the door is closing behind us. Yep. Yeah. Now I'm going to show you this uh, broadcast. Oh, there he is. Aren't you Paul Raiden? Yes. You have an excellent memory, Reverend. You've heard of me. Served under me once, didn't you, Raiden? Oh, did they all wrong him in some way? Is this a revenge plot? Well, it's not surprising it all doesn't flood back to you. You had a few thousand men under you. But then again, you didn't court martial all of them, did you, Colonel? Oop. Ah, oh, yes. You refused to lead an assault on a hill, and so I was stripped of rank, dishonorably discharged. Were I to have been able to dictate the sentence, I would have had you shot. Colonel, I'm sure you would have. That's why you are here. Do you recall who I am? Of course I do, Paul. I taught you in high school. You flunked me, Mrs. Langsford. Dressed me down before an entire class, called me names, <laughs> humiliated me. <laughs> he holds a grudge. This guy? Let me say again, how good of you to come. Good thing he's eccentric. The request that I come here was more in the form of an ultimatum. Ooh. That's the way it was broached to me. I was having my dinner. Wait, what did you two do? Paul, perhaps you'd be good enough to tell us why we've been asking. Yeah, why are we here? But first, can I get you something? Oh, his name is uh, Paul. My ball, perhaps. Paul Bear. You call me Paul. As if I was still sitting in the front row in your classroom. Yeah. But what about you, Mrs. Langsworth? A nice cup of tea. Thank you, no. I wouldn't drink anything you gave me. I would be deeply appreciative, Mr. Raiden, if you made your point. You've obviously called us here for something, and I, for one, would welcome uh, hearing yep. whatever it is. May I remind you, Colonel, that you are no longer in command. I'm in command here. Nobody what? leaves until I say so. I called you three here for a very specific purpose. To see my new chair. My dear old school, ma'am, shall begin. All right. So out of place without her severe spectacles, covering severe eyes, looking out of a severe face. No need to insult me. Are you finished, Paul? I've hardly begun. Well, then may I make an observation that a man like you, a millionaire three times over, and Ooh, three million, is so petty to deal with grudges. Should have a mind so tiny that it could brood <laughs> over a high school incident of twenty yeah, years exactly. ago. Yeah, exactly. All right, Paul. Let's talk about humiliation. Let's talk about your humiliation. Oh, she's going in on him. Mr. Raiden was caught cheating in an examination, and when he was accused of this act, tried to plant his crib sheets on an innocent student. Ooh. And in front of the entire class, I told you exactly what you were. But no room was there then, Mrs. Langsford, for a moment of compassion for a poor. 
frightened, desperate boy. Not a chance. But neither sympathy nor compassion can be handed out wholesale like cheap bubble gum. <laughs> Cipient must be worthy of them. I like her. And you never were. She's very eloquent. And in spite of all your millions, it's my guess you are still dishonest. Yes. Even now, you're a troublemaker. You just wait for it. Mr. Raiden, believe many years have passed. Between now and the time... What did I do to you? Well, you, for example, accused me of a lack of character, put a scandal over my head, destroyed my reputation. What did you say about him? The girl, you drove to suicide. Oh, because shit. You were not a man who held honor in very high regard. You can go to the devil, Reverend. And you too, Colonel. You know why I built this room down here? So nobody could get out? You understand logistics, Colonel. Does it occur to you why I should have gone to all this trouble and expense? I keep abreast of the times and usually well ahead of them. I know things that are going to happen. I pay for the Nuclear service. war! It's about to happen. He's got one of those fancy telephones, by the way. The world is coming to an end this evening. At 11.45, there will be no more city, no more country. All your friends and family, dead. They are going to bomb us and we are going to bomb them. By dawn, there will be nothing left but rubble and bodies. And Australia. They'll, they'll be they'll be fine. You'll be hearing sirens very shortly. Why did you gather us, the people you hate? And what about you, Reverend? Do you wish to survive? Do the rest of you wish to survive? Or am I to be the only pallbearer? <laughs> if he opens that door, I'm leaving immediately. The Air Defense Command has just declared a take cover signal. An attack by enemy forces is expected at any moment. You know who they mean. If you're in your home, go to your prepared shelter. If you have no shelter or basement, you're screwed. Go toward the center of the house. If you are in any other type of building, panic, run, riot, loot. Run. This is not a test. If your friend has a shelter, get a battering ram. Comment. I've got to get to my wife. You turn my stomach, Mr. Hughes. <laughs> get to your wife. That's not what's on your mind. What's on your mind is what's on the colonel's mind and your precious hide, your sanctified flesh. Mm. If I'm to die tonight, I want to be with someone I love. Not with you. Will you let me leave now? Will he? What do you say? There's the sirens. Even now, perhaps we can reach our homes before it happens. I told you how this room was constructed. It may be the only place on earth where you can survive. Do you mean to say that you would walk out of here and die when by simply sitting here you could live? Yeah, but with you... Are we to understand, Mr. Raiden? You will allow us to stay. As a matter of fact, it's precisely why I've asked you to come. What is your price, Mr. Raiden? I'd be interested. You will beg my pardon. Ooh. You will ask my forgiveness. If need be, we'll get down on your hands and knees to perform the function. Pretty please with sugar on it. She was quick. It's what children say. I don't want your favor, Mr. Raiden. Let me out of here. <laughs> Give him a slap, too. The door, Raiden. The door, we'll right? Open the door now. But I haven't showed you the the right. movie yet about the the city exploding. You're too blind or you're too stupid because none of you seem to understand. Do literally all you have to do is to say a sentence. Just apologize to me. Why won't you do it? All you have to say is you're sorry. Mm -hmm. I'd probably say I'm sorry just because I'm always sorry. <laughs> all right, you want to die, but you'll be back inside five minutes. Oh, get out of there! There's the elevator. Take it. And then come back down here to your salvation screen. You can see it all happen. The whole thing. Watch the world being shoveled into a grave. Ooh, show him. Get out of there. Take the stairs. It's your last chance. Tell me, <laughs> Reverend, is life so stinking cheap that you can throw it down a drain? There are other things that come even higher. Honor is one. Decency, friendship, love. Try not to get too lonely, Mr. Raiden. Use mirrors. They may help. Oh, the mirror people. You know, it'll be a fantasy, of course, but then your whole life has been a fantasy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's good. She's really good. No, it's not a fantasy! Once they get outside, they'll know it's all nonsense. This is your civil defense announcer. Unless it's real. Attack by enemy forces. Wait, I didn't press the button. Take Keep on we didn't record this part. Close the door. It's actually happening. What? There's nobody left except one guy looking for books. Well, Raiden, you know, all they had to say was sorry. We would have let them stay. They would have survived. Can you fly a plane? Go to Australia.
Ooh, it's the water fountain at the st that was there at the start of the episode. Um, is he just imagining it? He's gone mad. Hey, Mac. Mac. Go on now, move along, move along, please. There is a thing here in the world. Move along. Move Nothing along. to see here. Please, please. It's okay now, you're gonna be alright. We're gonna help you. Isn't there anybody left? Time for the sanitarium. Nobody. Now go on, break it up. There isn't oh. a thing here to see. Go on. Oh, God. He's cracked. Mr. Paul Rayton, who sits in the rubble of his own making and imagines that he's the last man on earth. Paul Bear at a funeral that he manufactured himself in the Twilight Zone. <laughs> well, that was one more Paul Bear, a very strange episode. It takes a few twists at the end. It kind of gives you a twist, and then it takes it back and gives you another twist. And the episode is set up in such a way that you're expecting one thing to happen. But then it says, no, that's not going to happen. The whole episode's like that, actually. He sets up this grand plan. He's a millionaire. Three, three times over, mind. Don't forget that. Three. He's a three millionaire. A trill... A trill... Three millionaire. Not a trillionaire. He builds this shelter. He gets these guys in to set up this sound system to pretend like the whole world is about to explode. And he thinks, you know these people? These three people have really wronged me. I'm going to bring them down here. I'm going to scare the life out of them. That's what you're thinking at the start. You're thinking these three people are really bad. They did bad stuff to them. And maybe they deserve what's coming to them. Turns out, these three people are fine. He was the weird one. He was the the guy cheating and you know he caused that girl to kill herself and he messed up during the war disobeyed was court martialed but he couldn't let that go he was like all those things they weren't my fault probably maybe not in my mind but hold a grudge and now that I'm super millionaire how did, he, how did he get so successful? I don't think we know that. Lucky, maybe. Family connections. I'm going to lure them down here. And then I'm going to make them grovel. They're going to want to stay. Because the whole world is gone. You know? But they didn't want to. Nope. They were like... Uh, this guy's creep, and the second he opens that door, get out of here. And it turns out that he couldn't corrupt them. He couldn't make them go down to his level or betray their principles. Even though he held the entire, their lives and deaths in front of them. They wouldn't, they wouldn't budge. They were very honorable people. So yeah, they took the first chance they could get to get up the elevator. <laughs> and then he had a weird break from reality where all the fake stuff he'd set up, he imagined it actually happening and his psyche broke and reality wasn't getting in and he thought he was the last man on earth. You know, Paul Bear to the world. The poor cop. Hey, Mac. It's not his name, dude. Yeah. It was funny seeing the, the set of the the city being exploded. It reminded me very much of um, Time Enough at Last episode. That set. Same sort of vibe from it. I expected to see Mr. Bemis just <laughs> wandering. But yeah, he's stuck there now. Sort of. It's kind of a confusing ending. It's like he, he held on to this, this grudge. He had all this... He was very petty. And now he's in a prison of his own fantasy, his own making. Maybe he had to create the fantasy so that he could explain the three 
events in his life that he holds on to, that he, you know, he doesn't want to take responsibility for any of that. So he, fantasy is better than the reality. Yeah. So yeah, I thought it was, I thought the world really did explode. I was like, whoa, what a weird twist ending. <laughs> But then they brought it back to it just being in his head. So, yeah, that was a weird one. I have to think about that some more. Next time, dead man shoes. But is he really dead? Or is he just imagining it? Oh, is it the guy? Remember from... Um, remember the shoes from What You Need? Remember that? We'll find out next time. So, if anyone ever gives you a secret message to come to a underground basement, I say no, don't go. Or send somebody in your place, get them to video it. And if, if you're walking into a vault and it's closing behind you, just get out of there. Don't let it close. Um, yeah, that's my advice. <laughs> See you next time.